Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet, and on 14th of Jan, Microsoft officially ended its support to its most popular release of Windows, which is Windows 7. Now, it was the most successful Windows operating system. Windows 7 was released in 2009, and still, after 10 years of its release and three new versions of Windows out since then, including the current version Windows 10, it has the highest market share among all desktop operating systems. So, understandably, not many people are happy with this news, but there's nothing that you can do about it. Technically, you can still use Windows 7 if you want but you won't get any updates or security patches from Microsoft. And in near future, expect many popular apps to drop their support to Windows 7. So it's not a good choice uh, for your primary computer and definitely not for any sort of commercial use. So now there are two options that you have. One is very obvious, that is to upgrade your PC to Windows 10 and force yourself to love it. Or you can take the second option, that is to switch to a Windows 7 like Linux distro that is not only free but also secure and less susceptible to malware infection. Now if you choose the second option, this video is for you. In this video, I am going to give you my top 5 Linux distro which is the best Windows alternative. Also these distros are selected strictly from the point of view of a Windows user. There are many other great Linux distros that didn't make into this list and that's because they are not Windows oriented. Alright, so with that said, let's start today's video. Alright, starting off with number 5. At number 5 is the Ubuntu distro with Mate desktop. Now, Ubuntu default desktop environment is GNOME, but I've selected Ubuntu Mate. Ubuntu is one of the most popular Linux distro and has been the leader for the longest time. It is still the most used Linux distro worldwide. The biggest advantage that you have with Ubuntu is the availability of huge number of software packages. Almost all software that is made for Linux is available for Ubuntu. So you're not going to miss on anything. And it's not just the software, the support for hardware is also excellent. So most of your hardware will work out of the box. And in case you do need any driver for a specific hardware, if the hardware supports Linux, it will definitely have drivers for Ubuntu. The second biggest advantage is the availability of online support, guides and tutorials. There are hundreds of videos and blogs available online in case you need any help. It's a big plus, especially for a newcomer. Now I'm going with Ubuntu with Mate desktop environment because it can be easily customized. It has four or five different layouts, one of which is called Redmond and that changes the desktop layout to Windows style, which is what we are looking for. It is available for both 64 and 32 bit systems, but the latest version 19.10 is available only for 64 bit system. The LTS is the long term version of Ubuntu released every two years and is supported for five years. The main disadvantage of Ubuntu is that it's not a bleeding edge distro. So software packages are of little older version. And also it is not among the lightest Linux distro in the list. The recommended RAM for 64 bit system is 3 GB, but it works well if you have a modern PC. Next at number 4 is one of the derivatives of Ubuntu and a huge name in Linux world, which is Linux Mint. The Mint project started in 2006, so it's a well established Linux distro. Being a Ubuntu derivative, almost all software packages that works on Ubuntu works on Mint as well. Both distros share a lot in common. Technology wise, uh, there's not much difference. Mint also provides the same sort of softwares and hardware support. It is there for more than 14 years now, so there are many help materials available for Mint as well. The primary reason for popularity of Linux Mint over Ubuntu is its homegrown Cinnamon desktop environment. Cinnamon desktop shares a lot of resemblance to Windows 7 desktop. The desktop has windows like bottom taskbar, start menu and system tray. And you have a lot of customization options to tweak the desktop as per your preference. The other difference is unlike Ubuntu, every release of Linux Mint is supported for 5 years and also all versions are available for both 64 and 32 bit systems. It also has a Mate version but Cinnamon is its primary desktop. Getting to the disadvantages. It is also not bleeding edge distro, so you don't get the latest software packages. However, now Ubuntu and Mint supports Flatpak and Snap packages. So you can get latest version of softwares from these places, but there are very few apps available on these platforms. All right, now the hardware requirement is less than Ubuntu Mate. The recommended RAM is 2 GB. All right, so next at number three is Dipin Linux. Now it's a Chinese Linux distro and is infamous for various reports that claim Dipin OS being a spyware and there was a lot of misinformation and people believing on hearsay. When things started to go out of hand, 
Dipin team did came out with an official statement clarifying the entire issue. But I think it's a great distro and among my favorite Linux distro. Dipin Linux was based on Ubuntu for a long time but now the recent releases uses Debian as its base. Debian is popular among Linux community for its gorgeous desktop environment. It's very clean, elegant and modern looking with transparent menus and windows element. By default, the bottom dock is in fashion mode, but if you change it to efficient mode, it gives you windows like taskbar and start menu. It is not super customizable, but gives you necessary desktop tweaks. It provides great hardware support and is one of the most rapidly changing Linux distro. New versions are released in every three months Months, each with alternate focus on performance improvements and UI design. HIDPI scaling works best in Dipin. It is one of the first Linux distro to introduce dark mode for applications. Dipin OS currently leads the development of Linux based technology and does not shy away from experimenting new things. The fact that it has this crazy fast release cycle really helped them achieve this. The downside of using Dipin OS is that it's heavy on hardware resources. Recommended RAM is 4 GB with 25 GB of hard disk. It does not support 32-bit system and also desktop customization is very limited. If you have a modern computer with high resolution screen, this is the most visually appealing Linux distro out there. Alright, so now at number 2, it's a very difficult choice, but I'll go with Manjaro KDE. Unlike other Linux distro that are from Debian or Ubuntu ecosystem, Manjaro is an Arch-based Linux distro and arguably the best Arch derivative. It's made for those who want to use Arch Linux but are not expert enough or do not have the time to build an Arch system from scratch. Its primary USP is that it's a bleeding edge distro. That means uh, that software packages are available for download as soon as they are released by their developers. So you don't have to wait for a new release of the distro to get them. It is also a rolling release distro, which means that you get quick and regular updates. Your system is constantly updating and you do not have to reinstall the OS whenever a new version is released. Hence, it's for those users who want to experience the latest software technology. Manjaro's default desktop is GNOME, but I'm going with Manjaro KDE because of its resemblance to Windows desktop. KDE is a well-established and popular desktop environment for Linux, and it's been there for 23 years now. It's famous for its beautiful looks like Dipin desktop, but at the same time, it is customizable to the smallest element of the desktop. If you don't like the default design, you can download a desktop theme from hundreds of themes available in KDE Store. Manjaro also has great hardware support. There is a hardware detection tool which searches and install appropriate drivers for your hardware. Last year, Manjaro revamped its website and now you will find many detailed guides and help information presented to you on this website. It only supports 64-bit system. The only disadvantage of Manjaro is that it's a bleeding edge distro. There's always a risk of breaking the system if you install any package that is not tested or not compatible. All right, and the number one position goes to Zorin OS. It's a distro that is built specifically for Windows user. Since its beginning in 2009, it has one aim, that is to be a Windows alternative. So the UI is customized to look like Windows and it definitely is the most Windows looking Linux distro. It is not just limited to looks, but you can also run many popular Windows softwares, games and run exe files on Zorin OS, just as you would run on Windows. Although not every Windows app is supported um, and the latest version may not work, but older version of popular Windows app like MS Office does work on Zorin OS. It is based on Ubuntu LTS release, so has a support cycle of 5 years, but it is not bleeding edge distro. If you are a total newbie and want some help, Zorin provides an ultimate version at a price of $39 that gives you installation support with few additional desktop layouts. Zorin has also announced a new feature coming to their distro that is called Zorin Grid, which is an application to control and customize multiple computers running Zorin OS. Now, this is particularly useful in large businesses and school environment where you have multiple PCs. It is an upcoming feature that is not yet released, but I will be reviewing this feature once it gets released. So make sure you subscribe to XPS Tech channel for that. The hardware requirement to run Zorin OS is also not high. The recommended RAM usage is 2 GB of RAM and 10 GB of storage. Now, Zorin OS supports only 64-bit system, but Zorin Lite, 
which uses XFCE desktop environment has a 32-bit version as well. Also, that was all. If you agree or disagree with my choice or if you think that I've missed any particular feature of any distro, kindly write that in the comment section below. Also, you can find detailed reviews of uh, the distros that are discussed today on this channel. I'll put the link of those videos in the description below. Alright, so that was all for today. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any comment, suggestion or feedback, do type that in, in the comment box. And also a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me. Alright, so thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time.